Okay, welcome back. We are doing more of King's Quest 2. All right. So, um, I think I mentioned in the previous video, this reminds me a lot of the pawn shop from King's Quest 6, because I am a shopkeeper. So, um, as is appropriate in a place with so much stuff around, let's take a look around. I'm going to guess that most of the stuff here is not important. There's probably like one thing in this whole place that's important, or maybe even zero. But let's take a look around anyway. Ah, dragon fire! Oh no, wait. It's just a mounted dragon head. Whew. It's probably the first time I've heard this narrator get excited in this entire game. Or at least that excited. Twin axes grace the wall above the front door. You wonder if they serve as a security measure for intruders. A large and incredibly hefty looking mallet is propped up against the shelf. A small engraving on its head reads, Broggy. Okay, I get it. This is where they packed all the, uh, all the references, uh, all the in-jokes and inside references into this room because that's obviously a reference to Broggy the Giant from, uh, from the first Quest for Glory game, which was originally called Hero's Quest. You are inside a cute little antique shop. Old furniture and knickknacks clutter the place. Against the wall, a low bench displays an assortment of items. A low bench? Where's the low bench? Is that this, this down here? I don't know. You are in... Apparently, this interesting looking item is a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Quite a useful little device in another time and place. That, of course, is the cartridge retrieval unit from Space Quest 1. Right at the very beginning of Space Quest 1, just walk left and boom, you're in a cartridge uh, archive where this bot retrieves the archives or uh, retrieves the cartridges from the archives for you. It is a red sorcerer's hat. Okay, what's that a reference to? Is that... I mean, there are many games with sorcerers. Is that Simon the Sorcerer? I don't think so. I don't think Simon the Sorcerer's hat is red. I don't know. It is a tiny harp. How cute. Okay, what could that be a reference to? Don't know. Obviously, the Swiss haven't quite got the idea yet. Um... What is that supposed to be? I don't know. Somebody did comment on a previous video some time ago that the, uh, the mention of Swiss cheese... Even the mention of Swiss cheese in the original King's Quest is kind of jarring because obviously Swiss cheese comes from Switzerland and since this game takes place in a universe where countries like Daventry and... Um, uh, uh, Daventry and what's the name of this place where we are? Somehow I've forgotten now the name of the... I actually forgot the name of the city where this game takes place. I keep thinking of Ludor, but no, that's where King's Quest 3 starts. Uh, Col Colmyra, or something like that, right? Col Colima, there we go, Col Colmyra. Colima, jeez, somehow I forgot that name. I don't know, things, things get all mixed up in my head, man. I don't know what's going on anymore. But anyway, um... In a place, in a universe where fictional countries like that seem to prevail, it's kind of jarring to have references to the Swiss or Switzerland here in uh, in a game like this. You are inside. Um, you are. There are some vases on display in this antique shop. Vases? Don't most people say vases? A rather beaten and tarnished brass lamp is positioned on the countertop. Okay, I get it. That's the lamp we need, just like in the original King's Quest 2. There are some vases. Yeah, vases. You are in... Some old shields are lying around in the antique shop. You are in... An expensive-looking statue catches your eye. It is sculpted of white marble and appears to be the only item of any real value within the shop. You find it quite odd that this grand statue is situated amongst other ordinary items of far less value. You are in... You are... A rather modern timepiece lies cluttered among an assortment of other bits and pieces. You are... In a well-crafted loot awaits the anxious buyer. That looks a lot like a balalaika. In fact, now, now that I think about it, is there really a significant difference between a balalaika and a loot? 
There probably is. Yeah, actually, Balalaika is triangular. Alud is not. Yeah, just it looks like it might be triangular because the bottom is cut off. But yeah, it's not actually a Balalaika. It's not a triangle. It's a weather vane with the obligatory depiction of a rooster. I wonder why why did weather vanes always have roosters on them? Where did that tradition start? I'm sure if you go somewhere on the internet and look it up, you can probably find the history behind that. You are in a stack of plain covered books gathers dust on the shelf. It is a crystal ball, fairly standard equipment for those of the magical persuasion. You are in there are some vase you are an intricately painted china doll, complete with a miniature tea set, adorns the bench. Did he actually... There are some... Hold on, he actually pronounced it miniature, not miniature as basically every person in the world pronounces it, but he actually said miniature. An intricately painted china doll, complete with a miniature tea set, adorns the bench. He sort of says, yeah, he sort of says miniature. That's... I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before. A strange cylindrical and slender container sits high upon the shelf. The markings on it read, Seven Up. What on earth is that thing? A bomb. Okay, um... I think... Have I looked at everything now? You are... Hmm. You are... You are... I think I've looked at everything that I can look at, so... An exp... Alright, let's try using the hand on things. You couldn't even move it, let alone lift it. I guess this is kind of inspired by Thor's hammer, maybe? You are not too fond of axes, preferring your own sword as a means of defense. Tis a tad too big to fit in any of your pockets. Since when has that ever been a problem in an adventure game? That never stopped any adventure game character ever. If you thought that you needed a shield, you would have brought along your virtually indestructible magical shield from home. So somebody actually commented, I think, on the very first video, why didn't Graham just bring his magical seal shield from uh, uh, from Daventry with him on this trip? And it's it's a good question. I mean, it, it seems like an obvious thing to do. I pointed out that that basically meant that Graham couldn't die, or at least couldn't be killed in this game, which would sort of eliminate the point of the game, because the point of playing a Sierra game is to die. I mean, that's why people play Sierra games, so it's sort of like... I think... I think in my response I said that would be sort of like a ball game without a ball, which I still think is true, but maybe some people disagree. I mean, I guess LucasArts fans probably disagree. Uh, please do not touch that. It is extremely valuable. Sorry. Sorry, sheesh. Placing your grubby hands all over unsold antiques may not be held in high regard. You don't need a timepiece. You'll take a sundial over that sort of contraption any day. What do you do when it's not sunny? While you are partial to string instruments, the lute is better suited to the true bard, or those who believe themselves true bards. Like that guy in King's Quest IV who tried to... wanted to be a musician, but ended up becoming an actor. You've never needed one of these. You can figure out which way the wind is coming from all by yourself. Yes, I guess there's, uh, well... Placing... These books look too boring to bother reading. Hmm. Unfortunately, you are not versed in the skills for operating one of these. Placing your... As a boy, you are mindful not to play with girls' toys. But if you ever have a daughter, then you'll have an excuse. Um... Okay. Oh, you know what I didn't look at is this, uh, stovepipe up here. You are inside. Okay. You are in Okay, it doesn't do anything. You suspect the reason why the proprietor placed this item high on the shelf was to prevent people such as yourself from handling it. Okay, that just seems to further my theory that this is actually a bomb. Well, I guess if you if you shake it enough, it could become one. There are no cartridges here to retrieve. What a shame. This poor little fella is uh, out of his element. He was really born in the wrong time and place. Upon closer examination, your keen eye discerns imperfections in the workmanship. Aha! These are clearly fakes. Wait, what are fakes? The vases? 
There are some... Yeah, okay. You don't need it, and apparently neither does Simon. Okay, I was right. That is Simon the Sorcerer's hat after all. Did he have a red hat, though? For some reason, I seem to recall him having, like, a, a blue or a purple hat. Am I remembering that completely wrong, or does the color change in different games? Because there was a Simon the Sorcerer 2, so... I don't know. Your fingers wouldn't do the instrument justice. That's what she said. This knife is too big. It would damage more than just your pocket. Okay, I see. So that's supposed to be a Swiss army knife. Okay, I would not have guessed that from looking at that picture. It looks like a ship. To me, it really, it looks like nothing so much as a, you know, one of those big barge ships. Okay, so now that we know that it's a Swiss army knife... Obviously, the Swiss haven't quite got the idea yet. Okay, it's hard to tell from this pixely... From the 10 pixels that make up this object, but all right. This knife is too big. It would damage more than just your pocket. Well, maybe Graham wants to get circumcised. You know, I mean, the circumcised ones usually smell better. And he, he is looking for a... Okay, anyway. Placing your... Um... Have I put my hand on everything in the shop now? I guess so. Can I talk to some of the things here? You'd be just a little worried if it answered. Best not to push your luck. You get no response from the statue. Better can that idea for now. Oh, 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 you made funny joke. Oh, this, this narrator's got the jokes. Oh, yeah, oh, jokes for days. Okay. They were never designed to receive audio input. Well, that's a shame. You offer a silent prayer that Simon will one day get his hat back, along with his own body. Harp on about something else, will you? They really took the opportunity in this room to make responses for everything. They, they not only... It, you not only get descriptions with the eye, you also get nice messages for the hand, and you can even talk to all these inanimate objects and get nice responses for everything. It might open a giant can of worms, but it won't do much to open a conversation. You realize that you do not recall how to correctly pronounce vase, vase, v oh well, never mind. Okay. Well, that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a, uh, not exactly breaking the fourth wall, but sort of, uh, well, anyway. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. All over this land. Hmm. To a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Shield me from thoughtless ramblings. Who will buy these wonderful items? What's the time, Mr. Wolf? You loved that game when you were younger. Uh, okay, that's that's a reference I don't recognize. If anybody knows what that's a reference to, go ahead and post in the comments, because I, I have no idea what that's supposed to be about. The lute will speak to you of freedom, beauty, truth, and above all things, love. If you can play it properly. Don't be vain. A book tells you stories, not the other way around. If you knew how to use one of these, you could talk to anyone, anywhere in the world. But you don't, and you can't, so you won't. Yes, Mrs. Potts? Ah, I would love another cup of tea. Thank you ever so much. What was that? Oh, yes, it is a lovely day today. Don't know what that's a reference to either, but... <clears throat> okay. It's a good thing you never got into that axe-wielding trend. They say those that do are trying to compensate for something else. Hmm. Yes, the guy who wields that huge axe is perhaps, uh... Okay, I'm just curious. I think this... Oh, I didn't... I didn't try the, uh, the lamp here. Please don't handle the merchandise. You get no response from the lamp. Okay, well that wasn't very exciting. Um, I really doubt that I get a unique response for every inventory item, but let's just... Just out of curiosity, let's see. Brandishing your sword might make you appear an accomplished fighter. Okay. And if I do something like this... There is no reason... Yeah, okay, just get generic responses. Okay, that would have been funny if I had a unique response for every inventory object on every object in this room, but... 
Apparently I do not. Okay, so the only things that I haven't interacted with are the obvious things that I probably need to interact with. Well, there's this door here. The woman's private living quarters are located beyond this door. I'm gonna guess I can't go through there. You know better than to poke around inside a lady's private domain. Or in this case, a woman's private domain. Uh, are you implying she's not a lady, sir? That seems a bit, uh... Ungentlemanly, what happened to chivalry? The door is not voice activated. Okay. Alright, well I've been avoiding acting on, on the woman because that's like she's obviously the one thing here that we need to interact with. So let's let's go ahead and uh The little old lady is tiny with twinkling blue eyes. Her white hair is done up in a neat bun on top of her head. She appears at first to be in her sixties. Then you notice the sheer quantity of makeup plastered on her face and decide that she may well be older than that. You should always lend a hand to your elders, although you might be taking the advice too literally in this case. Hmm. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, dear? Hello. Do you sell anything that would aid an ascent of a mountain? Unfortunately, I do not sell climbing equipment or anything of that sort. This is really a specialist store. Oh. However, I do have an item which you might find useful. This lamp is said to contain a genie. Never tried it myself, of course. I do not believe in using magic to solve my problems. Nature has made us as we are, and we should be glad of that. Uh-huh. How much for the lamp? The old lady hesitates. You sense she wants more from you than your money. You hope it is not anything that you will regret. Oh. Well, seeing as how you are a man who seems adept at taking care of himself, perhaps you could do a small favor for me? Somehow, you knew she was going to say that. I once owned a beautiful nightingale. Quite rare around here. But the sentimental value far outweighs its monetary worth. That foul old witch, Hagatha, has stolen it from me. Probably to use in some concoction or another. Her nose screws up in disgust. So, if you could be a sweetie and retrieve it for me, I will trade you. The lamp for the bird. Agreed? <sighs> well, I will see what I can do. Do be careful. If Agatha should spot you out of her good eye, then you'll be in for it. Okay. You have nothing more to say at this time. Okay, so it's just like in the uh, in the original King's Quest too. You go uh, you go to Hagatha's cave. You get the bird. You get the lamp for the bird. Is that guy still sneezing there? Did he stop sneezing? Okay, that doesn't make any sense. How did he stop sneezing? Or maybe it's a she. I think it's a he, but I don't really know that. How did that person stop sneezing when we gave them a handkerchief? I thought they. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe they, after we gave them the handkerchief, they had to let out just one final huge sneeze, and then that was the end of their sneezing fit. Or maybe they died. I don't know. Maybe it was the person who just yearned to give that one last huge sneeze in their life, like that James Harriet book, Only One Woof. I don't know, man. I don't know how this... I don't know how this game works. I am confused. I do not understand anything. So, we're back at Hagatha's cave, obviously. Uh, let me go ahead and save here, since this is obviously... Uh, back at cave agay. Back at cave agay. Well, we're not going to judge the cave for its lifestyle decisions. Um, it is a human skull with a radiant blue stone wedged into its eye socket. This reminds me of um, that skull from Baba Yaga's uh, houses in Quest for Glories 1 and 4. It is a human skull with large eye sockets. And this one's missing that, um, that blue gem. Hold on, we have, we have blue gem here in, our, here in our inventory. So the question is, should we try to complete a skull by giving this skull two blue eyes? Or should we make both of the skulls lopsided so that they both have just one eye and one empty socket? This skull already has a glowing blue gem. That is true, but he also has an empty socket next to it, which we could fit another gem into. All right, I guess we use it here. 
As you attempt to place the birth gem into the skull, you discover that it does not fit properly. Instead, it juts out uselessly like a bulging eyeball. Okay. Um, but he still... The birth gem <laughs> protrudes from the skull like a bulging eyeball. You'll somehow need to push it in further. Um, with a hammer, maybe? Hey, <laughs> this is getting a bit gruesome. You gently tap the birth gem with the mallet, hoping not to break it. It budges only slightly. You give it a harder hit. It moves a bit more. You hold your breath and give the gem an almighty thwack. It pops into the skull. Okay, that was nice. Um... The birth gem is now fully inside this skull's eye socket. Now my question is, how are we going to get it back out again? Or do we have to? It is a human skull. Oh, they're actually with different. A radiant blue stone. I thought for a moment that they're. The oh, birth. I thought they might be identical, but no, they're actually different. Um. Can we get it back out again? As you face the skull towards the image of the bat above the cave, you notice that its wing has faded slightly. However, you suspect that whatever danger the bat represents is still in effect. Wow, it's like a. It's a laser beam. The skull is... The cave is of the usual stone variety. Uh... The rock pile looks like an inconspicuous place to ponder over the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. 42? You could sit down and ponder over the meaning of life, the universe, and everything, but frankly, you have better things to do. Perhaps when Graham uh, meets that lady in the tower, he will find that she already has the answer to meaning to the answer of uh, the answer to the question of the meaning of life the universe and everything I don't know do we then you turn the rightmost skull so that it faces the bat symbol above the cave entrance the power of the two skulls combined has caused the bat symbol to disappear you sense whatever danger it represented has now subsided I can't help but feel this is just a bit hokey Two skulls with gems in their eyes create laser beams that vaporize a bat. Or not a bat, but a bat symbol. Um, okay, well, I guess whatever works, right? Um, bat symbol gone? I do sometimes wish I could type longer save game names, but oh well. So now we can go in, right? Yes, we can. As you enter, you are almost overwhelmed by the foul stench which molests your nostrils. It is obviously coming from whatever Hagatha is cooking in that large cauldron of hers. There are some things of interest on the other side of the cave, but you have no means of crossing over there safely at this time. A caged nightingale sits on the floor near the northern cave wall. The light from outside barely penetrates the interior of this cave. So long as you keep your distance, Hagatha shouldn't notice you. Okay, so what do we have here? I mean, obviously here's the, the bird cage and here is Hagatha. Is there anything else here of significance? The fluid of blood with bone and flesh will make my complexion young and fresh, inducing time to reverse its sail. All I need is a sweet Nightingale. Okay. Uh-oh. Hagatha has seen you. Uh-oh. Well, you are the gentleman. Saving me a lot of trouble by coming here. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Do a dance, Graham. You wandered into the witch's lair, and where you stood gave not a care. She soon saw you, a smile she gave. Your flesh, your blood, your bones she craved. It, so the game said that as long as I keep my distance from Hagatha, I should be okay, and I shouldn't be in any danger. And I just stood there and didn't move and didn't make a sound, and she somehow stood me, that stood me, uh, saw me where I was standing, even though I didn't make any sound. Unless she just turns around occasionally, but... All right, I guess we have to hurry. I guess we ha we can't just dilly-dally here too long. The light. 
It is a crystal ball. Fairly standard equipment for those of the magical persuasion. Can we take it? Unfortunately, you are not ver- No. Okay, uh, what's this? A glass dome, semi-spherical in shape, sits on the table. It reminds you of a shakable snow dome toy that you once owned as a child. Attempting to take the dome seems like an unnecessary risk. Are you sure you really want to try this? Uh-oh, Agatha has seen you. I was wondering if he would actually try to take it, uh... Oh, gentlemen. Oh, I can't skip her. Really? Apparently I can't skip this sequence. Well, that's quite annoying. You wandered into the witch's lair, and where you stood... Um, okay. Okay, what do we do here now? Um, As you, the a simple but elegant black cloak hangs on a stand. Looks like a Dracula. You need to get closer. Oh, do I now? Well, how do I deal with Agatha? The mallet is too cumbersome to make an effective weapon. Okay, what about my sword? When it comes to might versus magic, all bets are on the ladder. Think so? Um... Do I use the... Oh, I was going to say, do I use the mirror on her? But this isn't a mirror, that's just a brooch. What do I do? Use the candle on her. She'll like that. She'll get so... Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, okay, can I get up to the cloak here and actually take Being it? Being as quiet as a mouse, you slide your hand inside the cloak to discover a deep pocket Amongst sticky and disgusting spell ingredients, you find a tiny silver key and a peculiar golden ring-shaped device. Okay, hold on. That's that's interesting. What did we what did we get? This odd circular device intrigues you. It depicts several different symbols around its outer rim. The sun, a mountain range, a drop of water, and a cloud. Okay, hold on. Let's let's do this. Restore here. Come in here. As the quickly get the stuff. Quiet. And then quickly get out. You can't leave now. You may never get another chance to obtain the nightingale. Really? Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, the key would fit a small lock. Can I do something with this stuff? The golden object is very light and seems to be made of pure gold. The symbols that adorn it appear to have been chiseled in with incredible skill. Can I use this on it on Hagatha somehow? Now, wouldn't seeing that improve her disposition? Okay, I don't know. I need to figure out what to do here. Um, but okay, I'll go ahead and stop the video here. So we're we got this ring thing and a tiny key from that cloak, but I really have no idea what we do with them. I'm, I'm gonna guess the key probably fits the nightingale cage. That would make sense. But what do we do with the ring? And how do we deal with Hagatha? I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have to find out next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. This has been more further adventure time with King Graham the human and Hagatha the witch. And, yes, uh, and the nightingale, the bird, and the dragon head of the dragon. So, uh, yeah. Bye-bye.